Hey guys, how's it going? This is Todd with Rocket Stock, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make planets. And to do that, we're going to use a freebie pack from Rocket Stock called Nebula, and that is a super cool pack of some organically created textures for creating nebulas, galaxies, anything kind of space related. And even though they are labeled as space background elements, you can actually use them for a lot of different things like creating planets or if you just need some cool kind of textures or fractals or anything like that for your motion design and I'm gonna show you how you can get kind of a spherical looking planet using these elements alright guys so let's get started in After Effects so once you've downloaded the nebula pack from rocket stock we're going to go into After Effects and in our project bin here we're gonna right click and select import file and we're gonna find the nebula pack on our machine you can go through and pick out what look you're going for, that sort of thing. And so I'm going to go ahead and make a new composition. So here in the project bin, I'm going to right click, go to new composition, and let's just leave it at 1920 by 1080. And I'm just going to leave it about 10 seconds and uh, 23.976 for the frame rate. That's going to be fine. So hit OK. And I'm going to go ahead and start with kind of a star field to go in the background. A lot of the elements have some stuff that kind of looks like stars, but just to kind of give it a nice base to start from, I'm going to add in a star field image. Uh, and I just have this one that I found on Shutterstock. Pretty cool. A lot of detail. It's, you know, really big image, a lot of resolution, so it's going to be good for this. So I'm going to drag that into our comp, and right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and make it 3D. So just click this 3D box here, and click on your star field element, hit the P key, and it's going to bring up position, and we're going to hold down the shift key and drag on the Z axis quite a bit. And we just want that really, really, really far in the background so that they kind of, when the camera moves, it, it'll just kind of stay put because stars are really far away. So, and then we're going to scale that up somewhere about there. And I'm going to go ahead and select it. I, I don't like how many stars you can see. And I also don't like this kind of this bluish color. We're going to just kind of edit it a little bit. So I'm going to go to effect, color correction, and select curves. And I'm just going to click right here in the middle of the RGB curve and just bring down the overall brightness somewhere about there. And as you can see, it kind of makes it a little bit more purple. So I'm going to go ahead and also go to Effect, Color Correction, Tint. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make it black and white for us. So now we have this black and white star field really far back in the background. And we can go ahead and start bringing in some nebula elements. So just kind of go through. I want to start with something that's just kind of a, a basic, you know, space, you know, gas, dust kind of ambience. So I'm just going to pull something like this. This one looks cool to me. And I'm just going to drag that down right about there. Make sure it is on top of the star field. And again, we're going to go ahead and make it 3D. We're also going to push this back in Z space, but not quite as much. Let's just go somewhere around maybe. 8,000 and we're also going to scale that up make sure that it fills most of the frame there There we go. That looks good and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to add mode So there we go now the stars are poking back through and we have a little bit of a space ambience to the scene And I kind of don't want it to be quite so uh, You know prominent and I also don't like the colors that we got going I kind of want to go for maybe a, a bluish tealish kind of space scene So I'm gonna also change the color of this fractal ambience layer here and I'm going to go to effect color correction and I'm going to select hue and saturation so here you can actually just change it by dragging this master hue angle slider and we're going to find something kind of bluish so there we go that's kind of a nice nice blue let's bring it back a little bit into the green yeah that looks pretty cool for me and I'm going to turn down the saturation right there as well and I'm also going to tone it down just a little bit. And when you have something set to add mode, um, obviously you can always use uh, the opacity setting, but I kind of like to use color correction, curves, and just bring down the brightness. And if it's set to add mode, that's also going to kind of change the opacity. So I'm going to bring down the highlights there a little bit and then bring up the shadows kind of back to where they were. And I'm going to go ahead while we're at it and just make a camera and a camera control. So down here in your comp, just in this empty space here, go to new, camera, and 50 millimeters is gonna be fine. Let's hit okay. 
And I'm also gonna make a new null object. So go to new, null object, and we'll make the null object 3D and parent the camera to the null object. Let's name that camera control. And on the camera control, let's hit the P key and start the stopwatch for position. And let's go down to the end and we'll just push it forward. Looks pretty good. So we have, you know, this scene now with, with a little bit of a, a movement in the camera, create some parallax. The stars are staying way, way back and our ambience is a little bit further up. So you get that parallax. It's gonna look pretty cool. Let's go ahead and add one more kind of general ambience element here. So I'm just gonna click through and find something that I think will work. And I really, really like this star shower one. I think I think it was one of my favorites from the pack. It just looks like there's like some stars kind of pouring into this nebula galaxy situation. Uh, so I'm gonna pull that in and put it right there. And let's go ahead and make that 3D as well. And I'm gonna push it back in Z space. Let's do something like that. And I'm gonna also set that to add mode as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to our other ambience layer and go to the effect controls. And I'm gonna just steal that hue and saturation effect from there. And we'll paste it to our new object. And this one, I definitely wanna tone down quite a bit. So I'm gonna go to effect, color correction, curves. And I'm just gonna lower the brightness there. Let's just look at this real quick. So the Z location here is about 2,470 and here it's 7,990. So again, we're creating depth. So one is way further back than the other. And of course the stars are way, way, way back. So let's go ahead and make our planet now. Let's just choose a couple of elements that kind of look planet-ish. Blue planet is gonna be a great place to start. So I'm gonna scale that down just so we can kind of see what we're doing. What we wanna do is also in within the planet create layers as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deselect all my layers here. I'm gonna go up to the ellipse tool up here and let's just drag a circle out, something like that. And we wanna make sure that our planet layer is big enough to kind of cover up that whole circle. So just kind of scale that up. It's cutting off just a little bit. And on our shape layer, we're going right now it's just like a stroke. We're just gonna go ahead and turn that all the way down and let's just make it a flat white circle. And I'm gonna take our blue planet layer, change the track mat option to alpha mat. So there already you can see we kind of have a planet thing going on, but we're gonna we're gonna push it a little bit further than that. So on our blue planet layer, I'm gonna go to effect, distort, and I'm gonna select bulge. And so what we're gonna do with that is scale the effect up basically to the size of the planet circle here and just move it till you get it kind of covering up the whole circle. What that's gonna do is it's gonna give it that kind of spherical look that we need. And you can obviously kind of change the settings however you like. There's a bulge height option and a taper radius option. I'm just gonna kind of mess with the bulge height till it looks kind of like what we're going for like a planet. And so somewhere around there, I'm at like 1.5, uh, that'll work for me. And just, just so you can see what it's doing, I'm gonna AB that for you. So makes a pretty significant difference. Let's go ahead and build even more depth on that planet. So when the camera moves, you, can, you it actually looks like you're looking through clouds maybe, something like that. So I'm gonna take those two layers, I'm gonna duplicate it. And now we can actually just go and find another element. And so let's let's make some clouds for this blue planet here. Um, so I'm gonna just grab one of these kind of fractal ambience layers here and holding down the alt key and with the duplicate of our blue planet selected, I'm gonna drag from up here and it's gonna replace. And so there you go, now we have a completely different planet uh, and I'm gonna go to effect, color correction, hue and saturation again. And we're gonna make that blue or bluish, something like that. And I, I really don't want it to be really very colorful at all. I'm just gonna take the saturation almost all the way down. And then for that layer as well, since we're trying to make it like clouds, I'm gonna go to the overlay mode and we'll change that to screen. Let's take all of these layers that we've created so far and let's make them 3D. And for this cloud layer here, let's just select the position of both the alpha channel that we created, that shape layer, and the fractal, and just move it forward, move it up. 
So th this way it kind of looks like the clouds are raising up off the planet ever so slightly. I, I don't like how prevalent these clouds are. So again, when you have something to screen or add mode, uh, you can use a color correction curves effect. And let's just add in a little bit more contrast. So something like that. Just to do it, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more layer of atmosphere. So I'm gonna choose those two again, duplicate. And now we have another cloud layer. And let's just pull one of these other fractal ambient layers here. So with the element selected down here, hold down the Alt key, drag and replace. And then on these, we will shift it forward in Z space again. Oh, I, <laughs> I just replaced one layer with the exact same layer. Uh, my bad on that. Let's choose a different one this time. How about number eight instead? There we go. Now we have a really cool cloudy, swirly planet thing going on. Um, to me though, it looks weird how perfect all of these circles are. Like you wouldn't see that in real life. So I'm gonna just go to this topmost shape layer here and let's just grab a Gaussian blur from effect, blur and sharpen, Gaussian blur, Gaussian blur. I have no clue how you're supposed to say that. So bear with me on that. Um, I'm gonna make that, let's say 10. And so with that, we're gonna select that Gaussian blur and we'll paste it to each of the other shape layers. So what that's doing is that's kind of softening the alpha channel that's cutting our you know textures out. So it's not just so sharp. So already that looks way, way, way better to me. And then as a last step, I want to, let's just duplicate uh, the, this top shape layer, just like that. This time we're actually gonna turn it on. And for the fill here, I'm gonna select a gradient. And what we're gonna do is just kinda add an overall shadow to the planet. Like maybe the sun is like on a different side kinda thing. So let's just drag this around. We have these little gradient controls. I'm gonna drag that, kinda something like that. Get a nice feather going on it. And that looks good to me. And with that layer selected, let's go to the overlay mode and change it to multiply. And so now there's a dark side to the planet. Now really all we sh should do is just add some glow to it. So go to new adjustment layer and let's go to effect, stylize and select glow. Just turn up the glow radius to, I, I like to use a pretty high setting for glow radius and glow threshold. If you turn that up, it's gonna kind of make it a little bit more of a subtle effect. Yeah, that looks good. Let's just go to color correction curves and let's kind of crunch that down a little bit. And so there you go. After a quick render, this is the result that we came up with. So there's a lot of layering and depth that you can create with these elements. They're a lot of fun to play around with. And like I said, there's a whole lot of uses for them. So definitely give these things a shot. Try to make some planets, whatever you want to do. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.